Oh, where, oh, where does a boy go to to find a platform to play? Does he try FB just to see it's true? They'll censor me away. Well, I did YouTube, and you know what to do when they won't let you monetize. Sooner or later, when each of them lets you know that they don't spend any time on you, it's true. Oh, they censored me, and they blacklisted, and they did all things to make sure I was never seen by anyone, so everyone thought I must be dead. In their head I was, but you know the cause, well it wasn't me. This I hope you see. It was what we call the cyberspace, an illusion of another race. They control the secret gates of hell, 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 but. Don't tell anyone who drinks from the well uh, that the well is fed by hell. Drink the elixir if you believe what you see on TV is real. Drink the elixir and you will believe that having a mask on will somehow relieve any of the symptoms of 5G, any of the things that you will see. If you only knew, well, some like me, it is true that some of us see what do you do when you look out from your front door and they all look dumb? Sheeple running down the streets, sheeple driving cars, you see, masked and vaxxed and wondering what new thing will come to them. Ring ding the dom, ring ding the dom. Do you hear the bell tolling for your sons? Will we go to war in a faraway land? Are we going to start it because of a single man? No, of course, you know it's not a single man, you see. That is just a puppet that looks like you and me. Well, not me. Ick. You? Would you want to look like that? I don't want to look like that. Jeez. That just... Knocks the rhythm out of you. Ah, yuck. Suppose in another world, in a fantasy, that there was somebody who were to step into the scene. That somebody, not me, somebody like Darby, or RFK for that matter, that wants to lead, to be the symbol for what will happen next. This isn't just a single person, or nor is it a single nation. You see, this is a global thing. It is a chance for humanity. If we, all the eyes of the planet, join together, indeed, transparency, the ability of whistleblowers everywhere to go ahead and change the way we, all the eyes of the world, 
see things. If you change the way we see things, then we have the ability to change the things that we see. Are you one of those who came into life with a purpose, not knowing it when born, but living it in the living of your trials, of your tribulations, of your challenges to become strong, to become competent, to become capable in these times of need? This is why we, W-I-I, -I, all the eyes, all of us, the eyes in your forehead, your third eye, the identity you've taken on, whether it's a father, a leader, whatever that eye is, what will it become? What is the identity you create? The reality that you are the eye, which makes that happen. The future tomorrow is created by what you do today in your world. Darby created ponds where there was no water. He wanted life. Now there are beavers, otters, fish, turtles, birds, everything living on, of course, water. So we have to preserve water, the most essential, essential element of life. Yet it gets spoiled, wasted, trashed, thrown away, contaminated, filled with chemicals from one city to the next until the last city down the river gets the most slime and none of it's really taken out so what do we do it's up to you we can be free if everybody sees the benefit that means not just the elite who have it sweet get excluded not part of the meat that they sacrifice laugh <laughs> to their demise they don't understand there won't be any place to hide. Transparency is a product of whistleblowers giving away all the information we need to find. And if not pull out of a hole, seal the hole up. They don't need to come out if they can't communicate with the outside world and they can't cause damage to the outside world. I'm actually one of those that might think that having another society underneath the ground this has happened in the past and continues to go on or under the oceans as has happened it continues to go on and isolating them from our society with agreements truces or putting their spirits in trees like a phantom zone to be in a tree for a thousand years or two thousand years because i wouldn't cut that tree down if i knew cheney was inside the tree or Rumsfeld, I don't think he should stay a tree for a couple thousand years, attached to the ground, imprisoned, unable to speak, unable to do anything other than watch, and perhaps be fed upon, and eventually chopped down by the little tiny people, the little Putians, that will then slice and dice the big trees and turn them into villages, lives, entire chapters of human history that eventually, as all things do, cycle around and burn and once more the battle happens for those of you who are not familiar with the story of Wibbly and Wub and how we the light brigade enter into bodies enter into time but not just randomly we have a plan that plan encompasses centuries as does the enemies in case you are unaware this is just one planet, and it is not the first war in our solar system. They're cyclical cycles, and when they happen, because certain planets come into play, and certain comets come into play, and 
certain treaties fall apart. That's when it happens. That's our chance. The Light Brigade. We were born incarnate, but not like the regular, average human being. Not just sheeple, chasing tail, letting our lives be consumed, getting fat and ready for slaughter. No. That's not us. Not the Light Brigade. The Indigos, the ones who came, preparing for the star seeds, the crystals, the other beings from around the cosmos coming to repopulate the planet once the, sadly, the, the cleansing of the Petri dish. Voluntary, of course. Has happened. I say voluntary, well, most of those who have a half a wit about what's happening paid attention, didn't get distracted haven't inflamed their brains with all sorts of alcohol and drugs and other things and decide to say just maybe healthy so that you can be here, be ready, um, be staged. Sleeper cells, you might call us. Looks like we're asleep with our eyes open. Mm -hmm. Because why? We've waited a lifetime to prepare. Did you know you don't even reach maturity until 66 years old as a human being, as a human warrior, male, trained, challenged, able to use the weaponry of the body in the planet, in the time, not to mention maybe perhaps know of other things that others can't see. Indeed. If you'd have told me when I was 35 what I can do at 68, I would have called you absolutely crazy. Except I'm here, experiencing heaven on earth, watching others suffer, and because I have no needs, I'm not suffering. I have no great addictions that I have to feed, no... Um, obligations, no peer pressures, none of the normal stresses anymore. I don't have a business I ran forever. And you honestly can't begin to imagine how much different you feel. You think it's a matter of being able to release a lot of things that you carry with you, the baggage, the luggage. So if you go online to the Tiny Texas House's YouTube channel, you can listen to Chasm at the Fringe, which is a poem I wrote. Actually, music, you can sit in the car and listen to it. It's about when you make the grand decision, I'm going to make this leap of faith and leave all the garbage, all the stuff in my past behind and focus on the future, which is what we should be doing. Focus with foresight, what's coming. If you want to build up any speed, the last thing you want to be doing when you're driving down the road is looking out the back window. Now, that's full-on view into your hindsight. There's all these things behind me. i got to keep looking at them. Why? They're gone. They're past. Learn your lesson and move forward. Simple, simple. Now, you can choose to look backwards and what's going to happen? You're going to crash. No. Some people say, be in the moment. I say, don't be distracted. Don't be in the moment. You'll be looking down on the floor, looking in your car, looking at the car seat, looking out the windows on the sidelines. Guess what? At 70 miles an hour, I can guarantee you're going to have a car accident. A truck accident. I don't care what you're driving, an airplane accident. If you're not looking forward, you're going to crash. You can't be looking out the side windows. You can't be looking out the back. So let's put side mirrors on there and you glance. You ever take driver's training? You glance out the sides. You glance at the rear of your mirror. You don't twist your head around, talk to people in the back seat, and look out the back window when you're going 75 miles an hour. Guess what? Kick it up to my speeds. 200 miles an hour. Now, you got time to look out the back window? Uh, I got a rear view mirror. Thank you. <clears throat> That's all I'm using. Why? In a glance, I can remember if that's a lesson I learned to touch again and just dump. Why am I going to pay attention to all the trash that gets blown as I'm driving down the highway at 150 miles an hour? Am I going to carry that in my trunk? And mind you, I'm trying to get to that chasm. It's the same thing. I'm running now. I've dropped all my car. I don't need my car anymore. I don't need my baggage. I don't need all my things. I'm going to leave the chasm at the edge of most people's reality. On the other side of that chasm is a whole new plateau of experience. A world of opportunity. 
one you can thrive in. And what makes that possible? Would you believe? There's an old saying. Stand a thousand people on a long line, strip them bare and naked, take their jewelry, take their makeup, take their wigs, take their shoes, take their socks, leave them standing naked. No possessions to their name. Send them out into the forest and say, if you survive, you live. If you're too scared to go, you stay. It's merciless. Out there, terrible things could happen. Stay here? Guillotine. The guillotine is merciful. It's instantaneous. There's no pain. You can stick your head in the hole, push the button. Your head will be chopped off pain-free and you'll be on the other side talking to your family. Having a good time in heaven. Nothing to fear. Nothing to lose. Here. That's true. There's nothing to lose here. Except your soul. Your spirit. The ability of you to sell out your potential future. Anywhere else in the universe. You can do that here. That's the danger of the trip, guys. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. So a lot of people know this already. So you got to be careful. Why? Don't go killing people. Don't be treating people bad. Love is part of this whole game. Somebody wants to love me. So, please. 16 minutes into it, time to get out of it. This is a little word. And the word is wibbly. And if you go into Wibbery, there's 20 more words that make up Wibbery. How do you communicate energy of soul through your mind, telepathy, wibbling, through your touch, wobbling, through going on the internet like I am. This is called wobbling, and it goes across the cosmos, not just here. And then there's wibbleizing, and wibbleizing is to create the music, the words, the poetry, and what you see is what you get create me. I'm expressing myself. This is my spirit, a Wubtron, expressing itself in a youthful fashion. Grateful. Truly grateful. And I want you to be too. So let me be an example and get on my way and show you that you too, at one day, can age well. Yeah. Join me. I'm just a kid. Please. Thank you, thank you.